Hello and welcome to the Comparative Literature Program at UCL. My name is Florian Musknuk. I teach a 10-week course on apocalypse literature from Romanticism to the Millennium, which covers a variety of texts that I'm going to illustrate now. We begin with the word apocalypse itself, which comes from the Greek term apocalypsis, apocalyptein, to reveal, to uncover. An apocalypse, in other words, is a revelation, a moment when the meaning of history, the God-given meaning of history, is finally visible to us. So we begin our course by looking at the biblical origins of the theme of apocalypse in texts such as the Book of Revelation or the Revelation of John of Patmos, which is the final text of the canonical Christian Bible which has given us many of the themes and also many of the characters that we recognize in numerous illustrations, such as uh, the images that I'm showing you here by Lucas Cranach or by William Blake, uh, characters which we also find in fictional texts, such as the Whore of Babylon, the Beast from the Sea, or notoriously the Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse, which you see here in a contemporary work of art but which you also find in fiction and also in caricatures, in popular art forms such as this satire. We move on to Mary Shelley and to Romanticism. In 1826, Mary Shelley, more well known as the author of Frankenstein, gives us the first secular apocalypse novel, by which I mean to say the first novel in which the end of the world is described as the natural outcome of a global pandemic and not as a divine God-given event. And Mary Shelley's text, which we'll read together, is a text which conveys a strong sense of mourning, but also very interestingly gives us a very modern idea of humanity as a species. We then move on to Victorian science fiction, uh, the apocalypse literature written in the late 19th and early 20th century, when we have a proliferation of all the themes that we associate with the genre now, so um, meteors and uh, poison clouds, such as uh, the in this book by M.P. Scheel, uh, but also, as in H.G. Um, Wells' The War of the Worlds, Alien Invasions. H.G. Wells is the first writer to imagine a Martian attack and he gives us these very iconic uh, tripods which um, we find again in many more recent works including this filmic adaptation by Steven Spielberg uh, of The War of the Worlds. The Cold War period, our next big um, focal point, is perhaps the most um, recognizable context of uh, apocalypse fiction with the uh, nuclear bombs of 1945, Hiroshima and Nagasaki, and uh, with this fear that the world might come to an abrupt and violent end in the very sort of uh, near future. This widespread sense of anxiety which is in, uh, narrated in numerous works such as this film On the Beach, which also gives us heroic characters which are typical of Cold War fiction, the scientist, uh, the self-sacrificing mother, uh, the army man, the journalist, uh, and these characters are subsequently um, taken up in, in satirical uh, texts and films such as Dr. Strangelove or also The Day of the Triff, it's one of the more famous British works of Cold War apocalypse fiction. We then move into the 21st century and into a period which is also known as post-apocalypse because it is often argued um, the sense of catastrophe is no longer tied to an expectation of a future event but to a sort of lingering sense of doom and uh, we have this in books such as Cormac McCarthy's The Road or Margaret Atwood's Oryx and Craig, the first book of uh, Mad Adam trilogy. Um, these texts play with ideas of heroic masculinity 
which go back right to science fiction from the uh, 19th century, but also play with the conventions of more recent genres such as zombie fiction and uh, this idea of sort of a monstrous, terrifying apocalypse, perhaps a critique of capitalism as well, um, or apocalypse as an opportunity for romantic encounter. Then we have the climate crisis, the final reference point for our course, uh, where we really engage with the present and we engage with the sense in which apocalypse as a narrative trope is used to galvanize a sense of urgency around environmental issues. For example, when Alan Weissman, the American journalist, invites us to imagine a world without us, so a world in which humans have disappeared. We will um, end with this discussion, which is also very much a discussion of the contemporary and of the political issues that concern us, including the current epidemic, of course. Um, uh, I hope to have given you a sense of the course. I hope to have given you a sense of how the course wants to engage with your own experience as well as with the body of text. If you have any questions, you're very welcome to contact me at my email address. I hope to see you next year for the MA Comparative Literature at UCL and for my module.